Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and in this video you're going to learn the new features of UIKit which is a sheet presentation controller how you can show models. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see that currently I have simply a view controller and that's pretty much it. So what I want to do is I want to create some sort of a button that will allow me to show a model, show a sheet. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, I can go ahead and add a button, but I'm gonna start with a stack view because I want to also add a couple of different things to the screen, like a label, eventually. I'm gonna go ahead and set the stack view axis to be vertical because it should be in a column wise fashion. We will also set the alignment to be center so that all the elements, items inside the stack view will be in the center or aligning in the center. Now I want to put some constraints on it myself, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and set it to be translate auto resizing mass to be false. Now comes the time that we need to create a button. So I can go ahead and create a button, which can be a UI button. And you can see that UI button with iOS uh, 15, you can actually see a lot of different changes. Configuration you can pass in and also the primary action. So let's go ahead and pass in the config UI and then we're going to go ahead and say button. And from there we can get the actual configuration dot filled. Fill basically means that this button will be actually filled with a color. All right, so if you go ahead and check out this documentation over here, if you want to, creates a configuration of a button with a fill background color as a tin color. So that's actually going to look really nice. Now we can go ahead and give a title, let's say show a sheet. And now we have the configuration, so we can go ahead and pass it. And for the UI action, that's actually the click action, we can also pass this around. There we go. So now when you click the button, you want to show something, all right? Let's go ahead and make this var, since we're changing the property. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this button is available and visible on the screen. Let's make sure that this action, we're just ignoring that part because we don't really care about the actual argument of theirs. All right, so let's go ahead and build it. Okay, so we haven't really used the button yet. I'm gonna go ahead and create a stack view dot add arrange sub view and I'm going to go ahead and add the button and finally I'm going to go ahead and add the actual stack view to my view perfect we still need to add a couple of different items to the stack view basically the constraints so I'm going to put the center x center y constraint the width constraint and the height constraint uh, you can play around with that I mean if you want to add different constraints you can definitely do that Right now, the only thing we're trying to do is to add a button on the screen. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And you can definitely see that the button is appearing, but the actual height of the button, it looks very weird, right? So we definitely need to make sure that we are fixing that issue, all right? So let's go ahead and make sure that we are fixing that issue. So first of all, center y anchor we are putting it into something different meaning we are adding two minus 200 to it so let's remove that part still the button is too big and the reason the button is too big is because we have given a height anchor so let's go ahead and remove that also and it shows up nicely all right okay the next thing we want to add is a label, all right? And we will make use of the label later on, but I do want to create a label and add a label. So for label, I'm gonna create a lazy property. And the lazy property is simply going to display hello world. This is just going to be the label. And now we can go ahead and add the label. So making sure that I'm adding the label before the button, so it appears before the button. Let's go ahead and run it, and you can see hello world. Okay, so that looks fine. 
and it is working out to be okay. Now, when we click the show sheet button, what we want to do is we want to show a model or a sheet. I'm going to go ahead and create a new view controller because in the end, we want to show the items of the view controller. I'm just going to call it items table view controller. All right. Let's go ahead and create this class. So this is the view controller or the view associated with the view controller that we want to show inside our sheet. So let's go ahead and first make sure that we can even display this. So I'm just going to say view did load and then self dot view dot background color equals to UI color dot yellow. So whatever the color you want to assign, you can actually do that. The currently we, we're just trying to see can we show a model? And inside the model can be show this items table view controller. So going back to our code, you can see that we have a button click over here. And inside the button click, we can get the sheet presentation controller. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of the view controller. So this will be items table view controller equals to the items table view controller. All right. The next thing I want to do is when you actually click a button, I want to show the model or show the sheet. That's basically the whole plan. What we're going to do is we're going to get access to the sheet. And where would we get the sheet? Well, we can get it from our view controller. So items table view controller dot is called sheet presentation controller. So all of these View controllers now contains a property which is sheet presentation controller that you can use to configure the sheet. All right. Now, since items table view controller is actually declared, you can see as a property, and I'm currently inside a closure, I can go ahead and do a self on it. Now, one of the things that we can do is after we get the sheet is to perform uh, the tense, meaning that you need to tell that you want to show the sheet half or full. So this means medium or large. Now we can go ahead and pass in the medium and large, which basically means that the sheet can be displayed in a half of the screen uh, uh, and then also full screen, all right? And that is pretty much it. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we are displaying the sheet. So after the button is clicked, we can go ahead and say self.present and you can say that over here let's go ahead and see not over here i guess uh, let's see where we are present there we go can't really see it there we go um present view controller so which view controller you want to see so i'm just going to go ahead and put it as self dot items tvc item table view controller animated is true and then the completion is basically nil all right let's go ahead and run this okay now if i press show sheet you can see that our table view controller displays half screen i can actually drag it and move it away or you can see i can drag or swipe up a little bit and then it kind of goes up also so pretty cool right i mean so easily we were able to create this kind of a half model and the full model. You can also see that when the model actually, model actually displays or the sheet displays, the area over here is a little bit faded. It automatically does that. Now, if you want to also show the grabber, so we can actually enable that, sheet dot prefers grabber visible equals to true. This is even going to give you a certain area right over here you can see the grabber and that can be used to grab and minimize it pretty cool right so easy to do very nice now one of the other things that we want to do is inside our items table view controller what if we were displaying a list of something all right list of items so let's go ahead and first configure it so that we are displaying some sort of a fake list so that we can select an item and that item will be displayed in our view controller. 
all right so the first step is to somehow display the items so i'm going to go ahead and add some functions over here that will allow me to display the items inside view did load we will also register a cell now we're not going to make any custom cell or anything so i'm just going to go ahead and register a cell we don't really need the yellow color anymore so i'm going to remove that also okay and what we want to do for when we are returning a table view cell we want to in implement cell for row at index path okay so hopefully when this runs it's going to give us a list of 20 elements uh, which is simply saying item one item two item three and so on all right let's go ahead and run this and if i say show sheet you can see the items are there now one of the things which is kind of annoying is that if i'm trying to scroll the items because that's what i'm trying to do i'm showing a model or a sheet and in this sheet i have these items but if my sheet is halfway right this i can't really scroll the items itself because it kind of swipes up and the sheet goes up so if i'm trying to scroll it doesn't really allow me to do that so how can we make sure that it is allowed for us and we can prevent scrolling when the sheet is expanded it's actually just one property so if i go to the view controller i can simply set the property preferred scrolling expands when scroll to edge to be false because by default it is true so now what's going to happen is that it is going to allow me to simply scroll through the items even if it's in the half mode but i can always go ahead and drag this and now i can scroll from the top right the other thing that we want to do is if we run the application you can definitely see that we have some items so what if i select some item and i want to show the result over here item four let's go ahead and see how we can do that this means that the items table view controller needs to communicate to the view controller this can be done by creating a custom protocol so i'm just going to go ahead and create a custom protocol which can serve as a delegate and i will call it items table view controller delegate descriptive name and then i will say items table view controller did select we are going to send in an item which will be a string all right now inside the items table view controller we can create a delegate and once we have the delegate we can go ahead and implement did select row at index path so if you just type did select row at index path you can get access to that we can get the actual item from the items array we can simply pass in the index path dot row and now i can go ahead and say delegate delegate dot items table view controller did select item and passing in the item now we have implemented this part but it's not really going to work because the view controller is not really the delegate of the items table view controller delegate so we still need to find a way so that our view controller class is a delegate is conforming to the delegate items table view controller delegate so i'm going to go ahead and create an extension although you don't really need an extension but i want to or i like to separate out my delegate functions so i'm just going to create an extension and i will become or i will conform to the items table view controller delegate there's only one function that i need to conform so i'm just going to go ahead and implement that and we also need to make sure that self is the delegate because right now you can see that nobody has set up the delegate so basically there is no link between the view controller and the item stable view controller so we want to find a good place to set this up and one of those places can be when you are actually clicking the button so this is where we can set up the delegate we can see say over here that the uh, self dot items table view controller dot delegate will be self and this would be okay because 
self is a view controller and view controller is conforming to the delegate. The final thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and set the label. So label.text equals to item. All right, let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to show the sheet. I'm going to select one, two, and you can see that it is actually selecting obviously our items that we have over here, which is number four and all that stuff. It's uh, it's not like we need to basically set it up correctly so that we can at least see it. All right, so let's go ahead and try to change some of these width anchors or center y anchors to see if we can adjust it. Okay, so now we have moved a little bit on the top. And now if I select an item, you can see I'm selecting an item and I can actually see it. What about if I select the full screen? Hmm, well, I can't really see the, which item I'm selecting. I mean, obviously I can see it over here, but I can't really see the actual label because this is covering it. So how can we fix that problem? Well, one of those things you can do is inside your did select or did select save for the items table view controller, we can actually change the selected detent identifier. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we're gonna get access to the sheet, which will be the items table view controller dot sheet presentation controller. Next, we can simply say sheet dot selected identifier equals to medium. So this means that whenever you are going to select an item from the list, it's automatically going to go into the medium detent. So this one works because we are already in the medium detent and we can see three and all that stuff. But what about if I'm on the full screen? Now, if I select 12, hmm, it actually did move to the medium to 10, but we didn't really see any animation. And to add animation is actually pretty simple. Simply call sheet.animate changes, and then inside that closure, you set the actual detent identifier. Now, when I'm on the full screen, if I select this, you can see it nicely slides down to show me the actual selection that I've done. Beautiful. The other thing that you want to do, if you're interested, is once we run the application and we are in the medium detent, you can see the medium modal covering the half screen, you can see that it kind of fades in this thing, the top part, the view. If you want to not fade in at a particular detent, you can also set that up. So you can say over here, that the largest undimmed detent identifier is medium. This means that when you are in the medium detent, we will not fade anything, as you can see. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Hello everyone, and this video is brought to you by my brand new course, Programming Mac OS Application with SwiftUI. You can see that this course is a very, very practical course. It's gonna take you into creating many different application. You can see the Reminders app with the MVVM design pattern, saving it in core data. Apart from the Reminders application, you will also learn how to create a complete Maps application with the direction, the screenshots, and even overlays. And then finally, you're going to learn about how to build a stocks application where you will consume the stocks data as well as the news data for your application. You will also be able to go to a particular article in a custom created web view. So this is a great course and I really hope that you enjoy the course. You can check out the link in the description. Thank you.